Well, hi there. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. Ooh. And my guest is Ms. Nuya Gregor Fledon, who is, why don't you tell them what you are? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an author. I've written a novel um, that I've self-published. I also do healing work and um, uh, work with Tantra and yoga. Yes, yes. Oh. And uh, Nuya's book is called Callie's Gift which is uh, available on her website. We are not advertising. Mm -hmm. But it's a very interesting book. I've read it myself. I find it very interesting, and I like it. That's all I can <laughs> say. Good. Now, let's cut to the chase. All right. In the back of your book, you say that uh, you are an avid student and practitioner of energy healing, tantra, and yoga. Your greatest passion is the human heart, and your capacity to love, our cap all of us, our capacity to love. And one of your life missions is to learn to love completely, surrendering yourself and your heart. That would scare me to death. Uh, what do you mean by that? I'm, I'm, it's not so much surrendering my heart to a person, but that's also a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's more like a spiritual experience of surrendering I think when we open our heart when we live our life from our heart yes we we can be feel so much freer and happier and experience this amazing joy but we can also get hurt we can also get hurt but I think the heart can take that it's very strong and it has its own wisdom so uh, yes. some people are so afraid of being hurt they just don't want love anymore yes but th and then what happens is they contract in their fear and then they're not even going to notice if it's around and they won't yeah. have an experience or reject it when or it reject comes reject it yeah and that's a shame because i think the whole universe has been has been created out of love mm -hmm. and so it's something we can tap into all the time it's 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 available it's like what for me it's what glues everything together love love yeah. um the creative force. You could also call it the creative force. We, uh, in the mythology, we talk about Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. The feminine force is also mm -hmm. the creative force, but it's also love. It's what cr love, when we make love, we create, we mm -hmm. procreate. Um, it opens our heart. It, we, have, we almost have this like instinct to love and to be loved. But we're all very much afraid of our love not being accepted or mocked or for some reason not uh, appreciated. Yeah, and maybe we're actually afraid of change because love is also change. Love is not, mm -hmm. uh, you can't put it in a box. Mm -hmm. It's something that liberates us, but that can also be scary because if, if, if life is like anything can happen, we have all these opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's a little scary for a lot of people, I think. But it's mm. it's a wonderful experience when you have it. Yeah. Um. Like when you're a kid. That's what kids, they're very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. They play. They immediately become friends unless, you know, the parents are very controlling. Right. But children have a natural kind of ability to just love to mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Have you found in your own life that trusting your heart is a good thing? Yes. And, and actually, the, they've, found, they've done research on the intelligence of the heart. I don't mm -hmm. know all the specific details, but the gist of it is our heart is actually wiser than our brain because our brain is wired in a certain much more mechanical way, mm -hmm. and, the, and the heart has... Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, touching the mic. Um. Um, uh, yeah, so the heart has its own wisdom too. Listen to our feeling. F when we feel something, mm -hmm. um, we can understand it much better because we're relating to an experience. The brain is, is much more mechanical. It's going to see something, interpret it, analyze it. But when we feel something, that's and that's also what m most of our... Um, decisions are based on feelings, not so much always analytical. Even if we think we're analyzing a situation, 
we're really going by our gut instinct? I, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure there are different people are different. Mm -hmm. But I would say for the most part. But you can see how people uh, the dramas that people have. That's all because they're feeling something and they need to express it. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I've always found that love brings drama. Romantic love. Yeah. Y you're dealing with another person's drama and traumas and foibles and phobias and it's sort of sad actually. And I'm always amazed at how vulnerable men can be. I never knew that, you know, when yeah. I was growing up. And that's interesting, you know. I, I think th that type of romantic love is based on some f hardcore perceptions of and expectations. And, and it's not so free. It's much more boxed, the mm -hmm. idea of this is love. Someone who loves me is going to do this and that for me. Yeah. Or I'm going to have this experience yeah, when, yeah. You know, when I'm loved by someone. I, I'll tell you a story from my life. I, I grew up with a father who was kind of angry and didn't communicate or relate yeah. very well to me. And for, for his reasons, I don't know. It was just where his upbringing probably. I grew up with yeah. the same kind of father. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, after I left my second husband, uh, who... Um, I had a very troublesome relationship with. I went back home. I'm from Denmark, by the way. Yeah, perfect <laughs> English you speak. And um, I went back to Denmark and I said, I'm going to heal this relationship to my dad. I'm going to get to the bottom of why I don't feel loved by this man. Mm -hmm. So I actually, what I did was I insisted. Everybody said, oh, your, your dad looks like he loves you. And I, th I thought about that. Okay, so... I obviously, I'm expecting it to look in a specific way. If I take that idea away, mm -hmm. that uh, it's going to look like this if my dad loves me. Mm -hmm. So I took that away. It's like taking off right. some there is glasses, no you know. Each person loves in a different yeah. way, and there is no, this is love and everything else isn't. Yeah, and it was magical. I looked him in the eyes, literally, and I just decided, this man loves me, and I felt it. I had an experience that my, my dad actually That's loves That's fine, me. but if your dad is prone to incest, you don't want to look him in the mm -hmm. eye and, you know, this man loves me, you betcha I do. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know, so I mean, that's sort well, of a problem, isn't it? But you can say um, uh, men that have that tendency in their life, they have it for a reason. It's a strategy. It's not necessarily uh, yes, all I of agree. who they I are. Agree. They can still love you, even though they have behavior that's not... Yes. You know, kosher or yes. so, yeah, yes. relating to the other person. Yes. Right? But, but love is still there. And it was amazing. It was an amazing revelation for me. Did it make and your life better? Yes. And I Did had a great time. Did it make your life better? Well, I think so. I mean, we've never really talked about it, but I can see how when we get together, I f feel really happy. and Good. Um, and I, I feel like I don't have to say something all the time. But I can still enjoy his company, you know? Yes. And I used to think I had to, you know, I don't know. If I used to think there's something missing, but I don't feel that anymore. That's good. So. And uh, um, you talked about a troubling, you uh, are recently divorced, aren't you? Yes. Um, I think it's about a couple of years now. <laughs> yeah. Your husband uh, was abusive? Yeah, in a in a emotional kind of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was it was a very troublesome uh, relationship. Um, but I got but the gift in it, the gift was that I got to face all my fears of that I've had throughout my life around mm -hmm. around men because my dad was angry and kind of critical of me. Are all dads? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, well. I'm that dad. Sadly, I'm we seem to have the same type of father. I so know. Yeah. Well, we're also connecting because we have something in common. Yeah. See, that's the great thing about life. We're always, mm -hmm. we meet people in our lives because we have a connection or something mm -hmm. we can relate to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I faced all my fears. And I actually, f I, I can actually see it as a gift. I spent three years in this in a place I didn't really want to be in, yeah. but I got to, um, and and afterwards when I left him, uh, I went through like a, t uh, it was like a 
transformation. And like I said, I, mm. I met with my dad and I realized there is love. You know, men do love me. Yes. You know, like I can ex have an experience of love. Yeah. And, and, it, and it just because, you know, your ex wasn't loving. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was, tr he was, he was struggling with a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he was doing the best he could. Yeah. You know, and I was, I was just adapting and that was my, that's, the understanding who I am and that I have a tendency just to adapt because all I just want to have feel I w want to have an experience of harmony mm -hmm. and I want to yes, make everything yes, yeah. nice so and I have a lot of love to give and but sometimes even that is misconstrued uh, I'm not actually if I'm not loving myself doing it it's not really it's not really love mm -hmm. it's it's more trying to um enable somebody else really well, now there are problems them. when uh, two people try to have a romantic relationship and they find that they each have a different expectation of love sometimes it's not you know uh, this person wants this the other person wants something else and ne'er the twain shall meet and that's a problem isn't it yeah because we I think men and women are very different and we communicate differently so the the effort that you have to make in a relationship is to is to relate and mm -hmm. communicate and you have to take the time to do it like anything else you have to do the dishes you have to do i think you have to make make the time really have to make the effort um, and so you can always and in some relationships and and sometimes relationships also just end at some point yeah. i mean i think that's also okay uh, do uh, and you I really it doesn't it hurt when they end um, it hurts, yeah, but that's probably because we have a, a judgment inside or conflict around something. Like, I failed, if, I if did really something yeah, wrong. Yeah, yes. yeah, and if we really loved each other and we said, well, Diana, you know, we've known each other for 10 years now, but, and we really communicated, we'd probably say, well, now, actually, it's time for me to try something else in my life. Mm -hmm. because, because now we've learned all what we need to learn from each other. And well, doesn't mean we've had it. If <laughs> no, we have not. <laughs> no, I'm just you yeah, know. yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, that's ideally that's that's like I imagine that's possible to have a relationship like that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't had it yet, but I, I really believe in it. <laughs> I really believe can have. I mean, I know a lot of my friends. We can talk about anything and mm -hmm. also talk about the difficult stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to complete, so what happened when I left my husband was um, I released a lot of fear and I suddenly, I suddenly had this new experience of life where there was so much room for just feeling joy, mm -hmm. you know, because all the contraction and the <laughs> fear and scariness, yeah, it just really. kind of, it evaporated. Not that I don't have fears anymore, but it's like, they don't take up that much space anymore. Mm -hmm. So now I have all this immense space for joy and hap you know, happy feelings. Right. And, and I can, and I have, and I relate to people much more easily. Mm -hmm. And I can see beyond their story. Right. I can, s I can kind of laugh about, you know, things that may turn into a drama. I can still, and laugh about my own dramas. If you're afraid to go home every <laughs> night or you're afraid of what you're, significant other is going to do next maybe it's time to change the relationship yeah. yeah yeah and you could do it we can all do it yeah because love love is here for all of us i really i know it sounds very hippie like but i, I believe that I believe there's love oh yeah and i you know and different people are different people with different people. Yeah. Someone who's a terrible yeah. person yeah. with you might be oh, an angel with yes. someone else. You know? And isn't that amazing? I mean, yeah. just when you just step outside your own box and just allow yourself to yeah. imagine what else is possible. Yes. And that it's all about dynamics. And so practice awareness. Practice what you feel. Like, what, what am I feeling right now? Why do I, why do I do it? Why do I contract here? And why do I feel great now? You know, like, 
what, what makes you tick? Because it's beautiful. We're all uniquely shaped. We have be different personalities, different strategies, but it's, and it's all good. It's just about being more of who we are, I think. Mm -hmm. and really learning to love and accept ourselves, then it's a lot easier to accept others. Yeah, I agree. You know? And also I think as one grows older, it's much easier to accept others. I find that I grow more empathic with time, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I accept people for what they and who they are, and I'm not perfect, why should I expect others to be? You know? Yeah. Yeah. What's your book about? My book is a love story. Um, it's about a young woman who goes through this transformative journey. She meets this couple, and it takes place in Australia. I lived in Australia for three years. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. So I, I got inspired. Uh, my, my ex's, um, some one of his relatives has had this big house, and mm -hmm. I just got inspired. So, so this couple lives in this big house, and they're alchemist. Oh, wow. So it's also about immortality. Which you actually believe is truly physically possible. Yes. I mean, uh, yes. Yes. I think the body, in, in yoga and in tantra, they talk about the body being, actually it's perfect. It's mm -hmm. a perfect mechanism. And it's because our energy gets constricted and contracted that we actually, disease happens. Mm -hmm. If disease and, and illness didn't happen, it could go on for a long, long time. And they say they're yogis in the Himalayas that have lived for hundreds and oh hundreds yeah, of yeah. years. It's fascinating. It is. But I mean, I, I'm i like a little kid. I believe in a lot of things. Well, I believe in that. Yeah. I, I, I would just like to know yeah. how. Yeah. So I can avail myself <laughs> of it, you know? But it, I think maybe um, letting go of fear is, is a big good start, yeah, you know, and absolutely. creating more joy in your being. Wouldn't it be interesting if we just think we're going to live a certain amount of time and we cut ourselves short because lifespan has increased so much in 100 years. Maybe if we thought, I'll live to be 500, we might. Yeah, because Why our percep perceptions are very powerful. They're very powerful. Mm -hmm. I work a lot with my own perceptions and help other people change their perceptions because we can, when we relate to each other, we can pick, we can say, yeah, hey, yeah. I hear you say this a lot. Mm -hmm. Why, what if you said something else about yourself to kind of gradually change, expand your view of what's possible? Because with our imagination, it's, uh, you know, Einstein, he talked about imagination, mm -hmm. how important it is to discovering new things. Sure, and know? everything that exists, this table, this book, us, yeah. we were all thoughts before we existed in yeah. matter. Yes. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, can you give your uh, website? You're also a web yeah. designer. Yeah, I'm also a web designer. <laughs> yes. Tantra Goddess come <laughs> web designer. Great job description. Yeah, yes. I know. I've got many hats. Yes. Um, the, my, my website for my book is called kalisgift.com. So K-A-L-I-S-G-I-F-T dot com. And, and, and you can also contact me via the website. Right, and, and if people have questions about Tantra, about chakras, about yeah. uh, the kind of healing you do, which is body mirror healing. But yeah, body mirror system, yeah. And they can contact you. Yeah, and definitely. Questions. I'd love to talk to people about all this. Yes, yes. And, um, well, let's see. We have about nine minutes left. Okay. Um, what would you say to someone who's looking for a relationship and doesn't n trust herself or himself to find the right person? You know, maybe uh, someone you thought was good turns out to be not good and people are gun shy. They're afraid of having that happen again. Well, how can people know? Uh, do they trust their heart in that case? Yeah, I would, I would practice what I did after I left my ex, uh, and this sounds a little silly, but every morning I would wake up, do my little meditation, and then I'd, I'd hold myself and I'd say, I love you, Nia, and I would say things to myself that I wanted to have heard from my ex, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it just went downhill very fast once we got married, and he didn't, you know, he tried to be nice to me, but <laughs> it was hard. and. Um, so, and I felt a little silly in the beginning, 
but it actually worked. Something I found that works is to imagine someone who dislikes you. Imagine this person saying nice things. Yeah, to that you. too. That was. And it changes the energy, I think. Yeah. yeah, and anything you can visualize, like watch, watch your thoughts. Watch what you keep. W if you're thinking about mm -hmm. relationships, what comes up? What's the feeling? Do you contract? And if you do, try to just breathe into it and be excited. It's important to be excited yeah. and insist, insist that you want a change in your life. For the better. Yeah, f because the change happens, it's not just outside, it, it's kind of like a, it's a co-creation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it happens inside, outside. Well, so many it's people like a say, oh, why me? Oh, my life is awful. Yeah. I hate my life. Life sucks. And then their life is awful and life sucks. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, if you think, my life is fabulous, I'm so happy, everything is wonderful, only good things happen for me, it sort of works, actually. Yeah, mm. it does. Um, uh, let me share another story. I, yeah, when I was a teenager, I had a tendency to be a little depressed. I grew up in Denmark. Uh, the weather is very depressing. Mm -hmm. and people are very introverted. Mm -hmm. And I... I I was an introvert. I, I think I've changed the, that. Yes, yeah. totally. <laughs> One thousand percent. Yeah. So, um, but what I decided to do. But maybe you're an extrovert only in English, and in Danish you're an introvert. No, because I, when I go home, I have such a great time being oh. an extrovert because and making people smile and connecting oh, and good. opening. So you really have yeah, changed all across I the board. I yes. Uh, but I, you know, I still have it. I still need my introvertedness time you know the time where I'm mm -hmm. introverted mm -hmm. it's I think I just found a balance which mm -hmm. is really cool but so when I was a kid of uh, a teenager uh, somebody I remember somebody told me oh you have such a beautiful smile and mm -hmm. uh, a stranger in the street right and you should smile more and so I thought about that I thought about what that meant mm -hmm. and so I decided to make a little exercise so every time I would go out I would look people in the eye strangers in the street and I would smile oh. So that was my practice, and no matter what mood I was in, Didn't I would. Didn't men try to pick you up? Oh yeah, that happens. <laughs> but I'm not. See, I'm not afraid. You know. <laughs> but then you have to deal with them saying, "Okay, come That's on, let's okay, go." Because I think I think part of the my job in the world is to spread a little more joy, and uh, and and I can do that with my smile. And now I can do it also talking to people. I feel comfortable talking mm -hmm. to anyone. You know, I used to just smile, mm. and it actually helped me too. It helped me bring me out of whatever state of mind I was in, because mm -hmm. I insisted that I, I was in the world. I was, I was relating to people just in a very subtle way. When you're just smiling and saying hello, it's mm. not, it's not. But it just, it's amazing what change it made for me, and I've done it ever since. And you know, I can go to a new country and I can kind of get a feel for how open people mm -hmm. are and and get a feel of people just by just insisting on looking in them mm. in the eye and smiling and just saying, well, we're in this world together, yes. you know? Your and English is magnificent. I It took <laughs> me a long time to realize, wait a minute, you're not from here. But I heard one word that yeah. you said. The, uh, but I took it for granted that you were born in the U.S. Oh, I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> hmm? that you come from another country and grew up speaking Danish. Yeah. Oh, well, I loved English when I was a kid. So oh, it's well my big love. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you speak it perfectly. And I, I never guessed, you know. Wow. So cool. now how can people get hold of you if they want to talk about your book or... Uh, body mirror healing or chakras or and what tantra or yeah. tantra yes yeah. what exactly is tantra short little definition <laughs> the short I, don't I know. always <laughs> thought it meant like <laughs> orgasm without the sex without orgasm that's what I thought it meant um no <laughs> we have lots of fun lots of orgasms but yeah it's uh, it's not just about sex it's a lot uh, it's <laughs> but in our Western sex-obsessed culture, of course, we focus, sex. we hone in on yes. that. But that yes. is because there's a need for relating to sex in a new way. Yes, I think. Well, it's very yeah. sort of. It does tend to de denigrate women a lot of the time. Like, you know, like I if I smile at a man in the street, he might mm -hmm. stop and say how much or something yeah. rude. 
And, you know, I mean, for obvious reasons, I don't want trouble or problems. So I would never smile at a man in the street. Oh, yeah. Well, I do but get... But then I look slutty, so, you know, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you look slutty. Oh, good. I but, try. I mean, um, um, what's I wrong know. about being slutty? Sometimes, anyway. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, it's also like, how do you, like, how do you feel about the, what you doing or being or when you smile because whatever comes through people are going to pick up all the subtleties I, but yes but many people have their own mindset and a woman wearing a lot of makeup with red hair smiling at me she must be a prostitute i wonder how much she charges that would okay. be but i don't think ev all men were going to have that reaction is that is that your well, I don't you smile don't at know. men in the street. <laughs> so you you don't know? actually I know. don't know. <laughs> we could do like we could do a little uh, a candid camera. We thing yeah, we like yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be so much fun. Yeah. I would love to go to New York and do all little exercises, see how people respond to certain things. I guess. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> it can get dangerous. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, my guest has been Ms. Nuya Gregor Fledon, mm -hmm. who is the author of Callie's Gift, and. What is your website? Kalisgift.com. So K A L I S G I F T dot com. And you are also a specialist in Tantra, in body mirror healing, in your web designer. Yeah. I yeah. also do a little bit of yoga yes. and graphic design. Yes. I have I've had my own business for many years. Good for you. Thank you. I, is it difficult? Ooh, we only have one minute yeah. left. Is it difficult to be spiritual and make money at the same time? No, I don't think so. I think because it's money possible. is energy and you yeah. can attract it. Yeah. Okay, I'm Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. I love you a lot, even if no one else loves you. I love you. I love you a lot. I'll see you next time.